You asked for it, you get it. Ryu and I will rip your photos into smithereens. Hold on to your headphones. Here comes the pain. And it was a very long summer vacation. Um, I'm probably at fault for actually not doing any sort of uh, BLFS stuff. It's really, really absolutely my fault. Um, I've just been busy with uh, the World Cup and whatnot. I guess we'll talk about that in the podcast, but it's, it's, uh, it's me. And then I was supposed to like, do one with Matt when I was in Japan, and I never got back to him. And, yeah. But we're back now. Better than ever. And uh, we are going to start a uh, the end of summer training round. And Matt has to go. So let's just make sure that we get these things sorted so that everybody gets to see what we do. So this is my read, and this is a track and field picture that I think everybody probably has seen multiple times. I'm not fine with it because I don't like the fact that like if we're going to do something like this, it should be, you know, like that state championship should be just center, center, center. Um, and then I don't want, because the right-hand side like, is, is cut off, and that really kind of just disturbs me to no end or crop the other one so that you just have that yeah um, it's, it's just all off like it's it's just all off like you had an idea and you just said okay that's the idea you didn't you didn't think about it you didn't adjust it's just sloppy it's just you know short depth of field and the thing that is usually in focus is out of focus that that was the extent of the idea but you didn't maximize it you didn't look for the lines you didn't look for the framing you didn't look for the right angle and when you do something like this where the athletes aren't in focus there needs to be like a really compelling reason for that to happen and you just you know like the beginnings of it are there right those you know those guys all jumping over at the same time you know that's the beginnings of it but that's not the whole picture so you know you needed to be exactly at the level of the tops of the hurdles and you needed to, you know, either be on one of those lane lines or right in the middle of the lane line. But as it is, it's just all off. Everything is off the angle up and down the angle left to right and where those guys are in the frame and the, you know, the writing getting cut off on one side and not on the other side. Like it's just, you didn't, you didn't follow through on the idea when, once you have the idea, you still need to figure out the best way to execute it. This is not that. No. And I also just think that like this type of shot has been done billion times before, so I'm really not interested in, you know, have to see another one. Off we go. And this is by Toen, and the guy is on the thing. The pitch and he's whatever. Um, yeah, kind of same thing. I've seen it so many times now, this, you know, guy just on the floor and not doing anything and getting medical attention. And there's basically too many things happening um, in terms of there's uh, the opposing player um, with his teammate on the far right. And I think it's the goalkeepers there as well, but they just kind of crowd the scene for absolutely uh, zero positive impact. It just kind of takes everything away from the whole thing. And it's just a no no to me. So this is yeah, if, if you had had like everybody if everybody on the team was lined up and you saw everybody from the knee down or something like that then you might have something there you have the the empty green grass in the foreground and then the trainers and then the the guy laying there if you had a consistent line of something across there you know yeah, what conno time? connotating that you know this was so serious that everybody on the field came over but it's just sloppy Right, like you, you went to the effort of making sure that the that it was parallel and perpendicular to the edges, so that's good. But look at the top of the frame; it's just a mess. You know, legs halfway cut off on one side and just randomly placed throughout the frame. Random placement is almost never going to work. But you know, it'll work. You know, one out of a thousand times or something like that. Other than that, you really have to wait until you get your moment. Either nothing in the background or legs strategically placed in the background in a way that makes sense, or only legs as the background. 
but this haphazard way that they're doing this is why pictures like this don't work. It's just, yeah. it just looks like a mess. Oh, moving on. Just, you know, keep in mind as less is happening in a picture, more is expected of what is in the picture. So if there's not a great moment of action, if there's not some great light, if you didn't do it from a great angle, then everything else has to be great. You know, the mm -hmm. how things are arranged in the frame and how they relate to each other and the edges of the frame and everything else in the frame. Like really, you're raising when you're lowering the bar on the action or the interest of what's going on and you're just trying to make like a landscape or something like that, that landscape has to be really, really together for it yeah, to be good. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, that's a very, very good point. And uh, we've seen it kind of time and time again. And I think we'll see a bit more here as well. Um, this is a remote shot by Torin. So Matt Cohen. Yeah, this is, a, this is just a throwaway. There is nothing redeeming about this picture at no. all. And it's just a we, should, we, should be, we should be way, way, way past this. And I'm concerned because it doesn't seem like you are, like it seems like you're trying things, but I'm not sure what you're, I'm not sure what you expect us to see in this that you don't see in this. You should know the ball is the thing that is commanding you to look at it. And it's, you know, not only focus blur, but also motion blur, right? So that's bad right off the bat. The one, the one thing that's screaming out for you to look at it is out of focus and motion blurred. Then you have the net also out of focus and motion blurred. Then you have the keeper who's, part of his head and arms are cut off the only thing that's cool about this picture is the way the light is coming through the top and mm -hmm. that is so insignificant to the overall damage that you've done with the rest of this picture that it's not even really worth talking about so oh. like i said this is uh sorry this is a, i think i just lost it yeah sorry, it's, sorry, sorry. it's a little bit concerning because you know like we, we've we kind of stopped, I guess, having people try to explain what they were doing and, and for good reason. But I am a little bit uh, like I f it feels like we need to have an intervention a little bit. So I would like to know um, why, he has to do you know, but yeah, like like what were you thinking? Um, was it that it was a big game? Was this the, the winning goal? Like let us know what you were thinking so that we can more accurately um, do a pile driver on you for posting this here. Um, I mean, that is, is like it's it is very very bad, and I think he just was he got very excited the fact that it was a goal. You know what I mean? Like that's the the, the thing that he wanted to probably show us, and that was it. Yeah, but you see, like we're not really interested in that. You know, at the end of the day, so like not interested in the goal itself, but like the goal is good, but it has to be. Shot beautifully. Because I just. Like, no one really I'm trying to think of. I'm trying to think of what the rule should be on, on goal remotes. And for me, I just don't do them. I haven't done a goal remote in. I want to say four years. I think maybe the last time I did it was. I don't know. One of the. I don't know. Maybe like Inter, or. I don't know. One of those it, two Italian teams came over here and played, and and I did it for that. I forget. Um, mm. I forget who it was. But anyway, um, I, you know, I thought I might get a picture of. Uh, I forget even who was on the team. There were a bunch of World Cup guys who were playing for those teams, and I thought I might get a you know cool goal picture or something like that. But it, it never happens. You know, like I I don't have one goal cam remote picture that I would show anybody. Right. I have ones you know that work. I have ones that are okay, but I don't have any that really that are really good and i'm yeah, guessing cool. that you don't either so what are you looking for when you have a goal remote like this this is most of what you're going to get what else the goalie coming back like i know that you have one of the goalie who's stretching from a long time ago in the goal or hanging on the crossbar or something like that um but but what are you expecting they think about the distances involved so yes you have the the arena in there but the net and the crossbars are distracting from all of that everything is going to be six yards away from you the people who kick the ball are going to be 10 or 12 yards away from you 
you're not going to be able to get any kind of separation because that's the whole point. You want a wide depth of field in this. So really what you're trying to do is not a goal. You're trying to get something that's happening, either a collision or the goalie looking dejected or fishing the ball out of the back of the net. And I, you know, I just don't get it. I don't, I don't, the work involved and then having to go through all the pictures after to get something like this doesn't seem worth it to me. Okay. So the movie is uh, William, and he said that uh, the lighting conditioning was uh, very bad. And yes, it's bad. But I think first and foremost, mm, like if like if you're basically that far, you want to make sure that whatever your main subject is is having. Mm, let me just take that back a bit. If you're basically shooting that far, I'd actually take it wider. So there's basically a bit more atmosphere thing going. There is that smoke thing. I don't know what the hell that smoke, it, smoke thing is, but that looks to me very, very good. The light is hitting the smoke, so that means you can probably see it, especially if the background is dark, you should be able to see the smoke. Um, I don't know if it's like barbecue smoke or if it's like, you know, the guy just shot out of the, uh, whatever this thing is, the gate. No, it's or like, a, I'm sure it's a smoke machine. Yeah, I think that's really, really cool. So, like, I would actually rather use that and show, like, people quite wide and the smoke blowing out. I think that would be much cooler because you're too far. <laughs> that's always the case. Uh, your lens is just not doing any sort of separation between the, um, the, 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 the writer and the crowd. And it just, I think it's a bit of a disaster, this one. Yeah. So, this was something. So, at the workshop that I did in April, there were two arenas going one was horses and one was bulls and the bull arena was very small and that's because bulls when they come out of the chute the 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 best bull rides are going to be the bull comes out like this and then hits the ground and then immediately starts spinning around so really the most of the action is going to happen within 15 feet of where the chute is and only a really bad bull ride is going to end up much further away than that so you have to keep that in mind when you're getting ready to shoot where is most of the action going to happen where is the good action going to happen like you can eliminate okay what if something goes really wrong and say okay i don't really care about that like if i'm shooting roping or something like that i'm not going to camp out all the way down the arena because the only people that are going to catch all the way down the arena are people who are very long times and who aren't going to be in it so I want to try to find the sweet spot of the arena where people are going to be catching who are going to be in contention for it. The same thing happens in a bull ride. You want to be close because that action is going to happen in a pretty well-defined area, that area right out in front of the chute. So when you start out this far away, you're limiting what you're going to be able to get, and you're just really hoping that something weird is going to happen and the bull is going to come all the way out to where you are. Can't really count on that. The thing that makes it really easy for me to say you're in the wrong place here is where the light is. Look at the backside of the bull. So obviously the light is coming from up top and behind, not where you were, not out in the arena, not where the fans were watching, which is a huge problem with rodeo. People don't think about this because there's a million other things going on and they don't care because it's not on TV. So all they care is that the fans have a good time and they don't really care that the fans can't see a whole lot. So yes, the light here should be coming on his face, right? So that the people who paid to see could do it, but that's just not how it works. So you have to walk around and figure out where are the lights and how am I going to shoot with the light at my back and with the light going onto the subject? So I shoot in a couple of places that are like this. If I shot out in the arena, I would never get any pictures because it's just not light enough and the background is too light. So what you have here is the smoke is the properly exposed part and the face of the bull rider is completely indistinguishable from anything else because it's too dark. So when you shoot in a situation where the lights aren't bright enough to do what you want to do, you have to go, you have to change the rules around. So you either need to add light with strobes or you need to position yourself so you're shooting with the light. So again, bull with Bronx, you're screwed because they're going to come out of there and they're going to run and buck all you know straight out or all the way to a side or something like that but with the bulls you know they're going to turn back at least on the good rides 
So you should have been either behind the shoots or on, you know, a little bit over where the left edge of the frame is here shooting with in the direction that the light is falling onto this. And those pictures would have looked way better. I don't know if you could have gotten there or not, but that's at least what you want to do. That's, that's the thinking shoot with the light that's there. If you're not adding other light, because again, that light is really bright behind it and it's really dark. There's a huge difference between where the lights are and where the lights aren't. And you didn't shoot with the lights. Okay, moving on to the next one. It's a bit of a cowboy theme today. Um, I think it's fun. Yeah, this I is think good. it could be better, obviously, but I think it's a it's a good beginning. You know, it's yeah. Kinda... I think it's I think it's probably overexposed. I think that um, you know that when you're shooting with with harsh sun like that in it, then play around with the exposure and maybe make the sun properly exposed and then just catch the highlights of everything else. Um, I just think that would have looked way more interesting. This looks like, yeah. you know, kind of like a average, you know, like a auto exposure or something like that, where the camera was deciding what mm -hmm. was going on. And, you know, if you shoot in raw, you can always change that calculation later on. So again, if you brought the sun down to where it was orange, and you know you let maybe the dirt fall into shadow and the shoot gate fall into shadow except you know like the very top of the gate where the sun is hitting off of there and then the where the sun is hitting off of the guy's chaps and the bull's horn or whatever like that to me would be a way more interesting picture yeah it would actually be really really good because you can shoot into the sun you don't really get that opportunity to do that you know and it's right. like really perfectly placed right. i would just risk it a lot more like Matt said, like there's a lot of different ways to shoot this, and you kind of chose a safe way. And you don't I mean, need like to see everything. Just, you mm. need to see enough to make it interesting. And when yeah. you have that that light like that, let the light do the work. And it's one of those things. So, like, if you kind of see, like, okay, I'm gonna getting ready to shoot. I have the light over there. And like, you should just like see, like, take some test shots before they come out and see, like, okay, it looks like this. I'm gonna shoot like this. Um, I'm assuming like all the riders are coming out from there. And because like what in between riders is what a couple of minutes, not even right. No, 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 no. Go. no, no. They they'll they'll have like How between six and twelve shoots, and they're all loaded, and then they just go. So oh, there's, there's see, not I minutes see. in between. There's there might be a minute in between, but not minutes. Okay, so that that means there's another rider right behind him. Right? Yeah, yeah. So that means that if I could actually just say, you know what, this guy, whatever, like I'll just shoot, I will just shoot it with this exposure and see how it goes. And if it turns out to be good, then you can just kind of like then for the next guy who's coming up, recompose. Right, but you can do that yeah. without, you, you don't even have to waste a rider, right? You can just shoot what it looks like. You know, see, like in, in this case, before mm -hmm. this ride, before the bull was even loaded even, he could have shot the shoot and noticed which way the light was coming off of the shoot and, you know, what the exposure was yeah, like. Like, like. I'm just kind of like being a bit more practical, saying that like if you are in that kind of a situation, that I wouldn't actually like mind wasting that one thing to you see could. Like, how that looks. You know yeah, what I mean? you, you could. You absolutely could waste yeah. a rod if you want to. But you know, if there's only 10 rods, you really don't want to waste one. No. So you can get a general sense of what it's going to look like by just shooting, you know, just you know, just before all of this happens, even maybe when they're still in the shoot or something. Mm. Just take a general shot and then see what the camera is seeing and then make adjustments from there. And it, it and the, and this won't matter. You know, like if it's noon or something like that, it's not gonna matter all that much. It matters when there's, you know, a low sun, either backlight or front light or anything that you can do something creative with. If the sun's at, you know, right overhead, there's not gonna be anything you can do one way or the other. You just no. shoot it. But no. When you have like when you have a light that gives you a chance to be creative, then see what the camera sees and make the adjustments. And like I said, if, if this is in raw, you can still do this. Just go back and drop it by, I don't know, like a, a stop and a half or two stops or something like that and see if you can get the sun to be orange and you can still like see what's left in, like I said, the top of the, the gate and the, the mm -hmm. shafts and the, and, the, and the horn of the bull. See, see what that looks like if you drop it by a stop and a half or two. What is he doing? Yeah, this is this is close. <laughs> it's close, right? If so, this is a. Um, I'm guessing this is a bareback rider putting. Well, he's definitely putting baby powder onto 
the um, yeah but it should be much closer huh? like, right it really, so so yeah. so this this picture right if you it, so he had to shoot through a fence Th this this piece of leather is tied to a fence and he's shooting through the fence as this guy is stretching out this leather and putting the baby powder on it so this picture ends where his hands are and it you know it begins where his hat is so this is actually a, you know this picture is fine but it's in the top you know the the top right part from his hat down to his hands his legs and all this other stuff going on in the background it's is irrelevant yeah. To, yeah. to any of it like this this is his hat his face his hands and the powder coming it's off at of 1.8 as well <laughs> so no like yeah you have to do a better job in this really like 200 f1.8 how's that possible 20 20. Oh, 20. so i would stick have it through. another stick, lens stick, through, no I, the lens is fine stick it through further like you're at gate you know you're you're at the um even with the bars of the gate stick it through right get the camera in in there where that plus sign is right get it in there yeah but even that then like i don't want to like like you said i don't really need the um the 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 legs no it doesn't make no, but if any, he was like right it's if closer it's yes zoom, closer so closer closer it, it yeah, doesn't yeah, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't happen. The That's legs, what you want. Yeah. right? So mm -hmm. yeah, closer on this one's a good idea. It's not going to be a great picture, but you know, if you if you luck out and get a good expression on the face, which you know this really isn't, but it's not bad. And where the gloves are, this is good. You know, the having the gloves together like that and having the powder shoot off like that, like that's good. Um, but you need to take care of the rest of it, which is getting rid of all the irrelevant stuff. That's yeah. Good. This is just bad. This is. It's bad. Like, Everything's bad. Yeah. Like, look at the picture. Don't look at the rider. Don't look at the horse. Don't look at anything other than the picture as a collection of pixels, right? What's good and what's bad, and where where are they all in relation to average or good? You know, when when you add everything up at the end of it. So, let's break this picture all the way down into into its elements right the background and the foreground the background is an absolute train wreck right it's not level it's not parallel or perpendicular you have a trailer that's out of focus but not out of focus enough you have wires you have a telephone pole or a light pole or whatever and you have people standing on in advertising like all of that is a disaster you would not want that in the back of the craziest bucking picture that ever was but what is it in the background of it's in the background of a girl sitting on a horse right there's you know the, the shutter speed wasn't slow enough to blur anything but it wasn't fast enough to really freeze the action the horse is cut off at a weird angle it's also cut off like right at the at the hoofs it's too dark and there's nothing going on right so this is a total 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 throwaway and how do you learn from this look at the picture look at look at what you were trying to overcome with the action and look at how it didn't happen right that girl on that horse is not enough nothing they could have been doing right there would have made up for that background and that background would not have supported any kind of action without it being like wow that background sucks so what does that mean first of all you need more light or you need you know a slower shutter or a higher iso or something you also need to pick very carefully where you're shooting from because you never want this to be your background. There was, I guarantee you there was a better background to be had than this. Even if this was the only place you could have shot from, then shoot her at a different place in the arena. Nothing good was going to happen from any of this because of how bad the background is, but also because of the light, mm -hmm. because of the shutter speed you were at, because of the way the horse was cut off. All of that stuff took what was a bad picture and made it even worse. So, you know, when you go back to the bull riding picture that, that you made earlier, like at least you had a chance there. The light wasn't good, but the background was a bull, you know, like a standard bull riding kind of background. Like that's what you're going to get if you shoot bull riding from opposite the shoots, right? But when you shoot barrel racing, there's plenty of ways that you can be closer to what you're shooting and have the background be further away. And this is not one of those places. Um, just a quick one, like from a non rodeo person's point of view, just look at how the picture is. And first of all, 
and, you know, the background, yes. And the fact that the legs are cut off is just a no-no. And I'm not like, we're never going to say like the legs should not be cut off. It can be cut off if you have a certain composition, but it doesn't really, it's not happening here. And it looks really, really awkward. I don't mind the fact that she's on the left side and you can only see half of it. It's fine, but like, it looks really awkward when you can see, you know, if you see the entirety of the photo. It's not, um, so it's not balanced at all, right? You no. have a, a girl on a horse on one side and then you have the other side, like where something else would be or where there should be nothing are people, you know, standing on some steps and some ad boards. So you have to balance the picture. Either she has to be in the middle or she has to be on one side and there either be something interesting or nothing on the other side. No. So, you know, you have to you have to think about the picture more totally than just getting locked in on, yes, I got the girl on the horse. Oh, but it's good. Uh, we have a lot of shit photos this time. It's good that you guys actually just done a very, very good job over the summer. Yeah. Um, but one thing that I see really is so far is that it's the distance is all wrong. We've actually been we've been talking about it for years now. It's either you're very very cl like you're you're really filling the frame, or you're very far. You're very wide, and there's so many times that we see pictures and it's just caught in between. And yeah, if it's caught in between, fine. But there's nothing really interesting on top of that. You can get away with a lot of things when you're you know when you're using a really long telephoto lens and getting a lot of details and also doing uh wide shots because like you can just there doesn't have to be like something really interesting going on but if you catch certain details of the athlete or the sport that you're actually shooting it makes it a very compelling picture so case in point sean like this is a really shit photo and i think it's like going back to toys like the football thing is that you have this thing, you guys have this thing that a great moment equals a great photo. And like, at least for me, it doesn't. It, it, it's really, really never the thing. Like I want the context of the photo should not be the most important thing. It, it shouldn't it really even should. be, it shouldn't, it, I, you know, it shouldn't even be a factor really. You know, that that's for other people, right? To determine whether or not the context is important or whether or not it should be used in a certain way. As photographers, we should be, you know, like we have a responsibility to document things for history or whatever, but that's really only in like championship games at a high level or something like that. The rest of it is like, are we documenting the history of a little league game? No, no, we're not, right? So really what we're doing here has nothing to do with the context. It has nothing to do with the moment. It has to do with, can the picture stand by itself so i don't care if this was in the bottom of the 15th inning and this was the game winning catch or the you know the ball dropped in and the game winning run scored or something like that i don't care about any of that it's just not a good picture if you didn't know you and if you didn't know pierre right and you didn't know number five and you didn't live in this town what would be the reward for you saying look at my picture what do you get out of this nothing right because it is too far away and because the pitcher's mound is in the way and because the light pole is there and because the ad board is there and because the guy who is number five is not doing anything right you even if you had an 800 at this point the pitcher's mound still would have screwed you it still would have been too far away the background still would have been too close you can read the sign if you're shooting from this far away and you can read the signs in the background there's nothing there like you shouldn't really shouldn't even be shooting at this point like we say all the time like if you're shooting soccer and the action is happening in the other team the other side 18 yard box just stop shooting i do it all the time i just stop shooting because even if that picture is important in a way that it runs somewhere it's not going to be satisfying to me it's not going to be something that i'm going to show to other people and say look what i did it's not going to be in my portfolio it's just too far away for it to be a good picture yeah so Yes, shooting baseball sucks. It's why I don't do it anymore because way too much of the action happens way too far away. What do you do? You shoot things that are closer to you and you watch and you think about what you're going to do when things come closer to you instead of trying to catch Pierre making a diving throw 250 feet away from you. Fucking Pierre. I'm fine with this. I'm not fine with the guy in the background, but I'm fine with like that moment thing, you know? Yeah, but I mean, the 
the t-shirt like if that guy had been wearing a red shirt if he had been on their team instead of on the other team it would have been fine but that white is just a disaster and i would throw and for that reason i would have thrown this away yeah i'm fine or, with or it, you know you thing. know you could have cropped it to the hands right if you were you know the hands and the wrists or something like that it would have been mm -hmm. yeah but i wouldn't really see like it wouldn't like it would just be just two hands it just won't do it you know what i mean so it's unfortunate that the guys in the back but there's nothing you can do. It's a matter of timing. It's also fine as well, but I would like to, because you see this quite a lot in every sport, you know, where people are upset. Um, in this case, I would like to have a bit more something else going on. Like if there's like people, um, if he missed something, so if he missed a goal, if he missed whatever, um, ultimately I would like to have like in the background something completely opposite going on so he missed a shot the other team is celebrating or something he is. whatever that guy, you know that guy in the background is celebrating yeah but i think you have to read too much to do it yeah, yeah, yeah so i'm fine not. with that you know like i'm not asking more to do it. it's fine uh, I, yeah i i think it i think it's okay i think yeah. honestly i think you know you either want more context or way less right i would be okay with just cropping it to his elbows and his head yeah um it's still no no matter what you're gonna do it's not gonna be a great picture but it's okay and chris mora uh blah 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 this is a guy with the good light chris mora no no no, no. that's scott oh yeah um this is not good light <laughs> or it's not enough it's it, not, it actually really it, shit well it could be like like this is another no. one where I, where I wonder if you if if he had dropped the exposure all the way if it would have looked i think it would have looked kind of cool like you know again look at how the light is hitting the tops you know of his head and his back and his arms like so the light is coming straight down it's just not as bright as it was in yeah, scott's pictures like, it's uh, the whole thing the com the composition is bad yeah, I'm just saying that that this was doable, right? Like good pictures, we see we see arenas and gyms and whatever where you weren't getting anything good, right? Mm -hmm. There, it was possible here. Oh, absolutely! Like, it looks yeah. like it. You know, it's yeah. shot from like yeah. the, the the lights coming from the top and it looks really right. cool. Like oh, right. Yeah, so so that. again, if you, and, and look at how the background is like. There's no spilling going on here. Like it's no. legit dark in the background. So what I would want to see is all the way dark. Right, I don't want to see the faces. I don't want to see the logo in the background, and I don't much care how dark the parts that the light aren't shooting. I want to see this two stops lower than it is here. You're not going to be able to shoot this straight up. You're not going to be able to get you know like a series of 200 great action pictures from this. But if you waited until they got into you know a crazy twisted up kind of situation and lowered the exposure so that only the things that were directly getting the light, like the tops of all of them. I think that would look that really, would cool. really cool. Yeah. You can imagine like if he was like looking up, you know, like how cool would that be? Just like, just, and I think like, it's, it's really like understated, like how much, you know, composition is important. And so is light and direction of light is very, 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 very important. And so few people play around with it. Like you try to basically get a really balanced shot all the time. And that's not how it works. Like you have to take looking, a lot of risks in these extreme. things. Yeah, you're looking for the edges. Like, what can I do with this? Not what is the camera doing by itself, right? Yeah. That's what. That's why you need to it's like a dumb dumb thing. I remember I, I say this from time to time. It was like when I was coming up. It was all like, and I learned a lot from, you know, like Flickr sports photography groups and, you know, other boards and whatever about like what people were doing and how to solve certain problems or whatever. And there was like this whole vibe and it was, it, I boil it down to saying real men shoot manual, right? There was always this thing about, you know, like if you posted a picture that you had used auto ISO for or aperture priority or whatever, people would be like, Oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? And it's like, I don't care how you made the picture, right? If it's a good picture, it's a good picture. But the flip side of that is you need to know what's happening. You need to know how to do it in manual because you don't always want the camera making the decisions for you. I don't care if I can read the USA on this guy's shirt, right? That's not receiving any direct light from above. So I don't care about it. What I care about are the edges and the different, like use your, cur use your cursor on where the light is hitting and where it's not hitting. 
Yeah. So yeah, see how that's much lighter. Yeah. See how the tops of his arm is much, much, much lighter. It's like that's three stops or something from the light part to the dark part of his arms. I don't care if the dark part of his arms were invisible. I don't care if they lost the background completely because there's enough light on the top to figure out that that's his arm and those are fingers and this is hair and this is his uniform, right? There's way more than enough context without what's going on, without their shoes, without the logo and the guys in the background, right? So get rid of all of that and just make it extreme. Just where the light is, is what you can see. And then wait for a better moment because this isn't, this is not the better moment. No, it's a shit photo. Yeah, like, I mean, it, it drives me this, crazy because I think is, they're this, so. This, oh, man. this is bad. This is really bad because what Whoa. what we're seeing here is that there was way more to work with. Like this is drastically closer to the dramatic light that Scott was shooting with than the light that we thought in the previous frame. So if you have spotlights Chris, going Chris on and, and the lights look like that, no, Scott was the other one. Yeah, who, yeah, had yeah. The, who had the dramatic lighting. I'm, I am talking about these pictures, though. If you have spotlights and if you have no light spillage from what you're shooting to the background, that is, you know, that is like, you know, in, in, the, in the military, it's called weapons free, right? You can just blast away at that point. You don't need to ask permission. You don't need to worry about the rules of engagement or whatever. It's just shoot. And that's what you should be doing here, right? Figure out you know, how to get that dramatic exposure, figure out how to only, God. you know, only use the light that's there and not, you know, not worry about the other things. Like, again, this background should be completely dark. You should be setting your exposure so that there's nothing in the background at all. And only the things that are the light is falling on are visible. And this That'd light so is way cool. too, too dramatic for you to be, you know, that picture before made it look like there was no light in there at all. And what we're seeing in this picture is that there was a spotlight. So. Yeah, you need to do better than this. You need to be using the light. You're focused on capturing the action, but when you find yourself in a situation with light like this, you need to figure out how to use the light first and then fit it into the action. Um, just for this, by the way, if you want to get it right, Chris, instead of like working on your your watermark, you should be working on like not to cut off like tips of feet and things like that over here. Okay. And that goes for a lot of people. Like you guys got like cool watermarks. Like man, you guys should put that energy into um, <laughs> taking better <laughs> pictures. Seriously. Yeah, uh, yeah. I I left that part out, but yes, we are famous for castigating people who spend more time on their watermarks. Yeah. So it's good. Like we're doing the little light stuff today. Um, this, this is what this is what we mean, right? This is what we're talking about. Like, I'm not, I'm not very happy with how the legs are cut off or whatever. But this is what we're talking about. This is consciousness of the surroundings and the light, and using the light instead of, you know, just standing where you think you're supposed to and letting the camera do all the work. Like, there is potential in shooting like this for sure. In fact, this would have been a legit picture if you hadn't e either if you hadn't cut them off or if you had cropped it in a way that you know didn't cut them off. You know, at mid mid shin or whatever but this is what we're looking for when you get a chance to shoot in light like this you should be taking advantage of it don't make it so that we can see that we would love to have been shooting here and you wasted it yeah and it's really good like you can actually see the like that's also you know when you actually do, you're shooting into the sun and when you have hair it usually makes for quite interesting look and that you should also always always in this kind of setting i mean just Go and shoot and make sure you know you don't burn your eyes but just you know go and shoot into the sun as much as possible and, and try different things and this is a bit of a start um this does really kill me because the fact that the legs cut off here it really, looks really awkward but the idea is there and click on one of those other ones see if he actually got it no 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 on him no no go back oh on him yeah uh da, 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 da. right below oh sorry i just clicked the other one the the rest is bad the rest is bad no yeah he's just cutting okay yeah, this is cut. unfortunate because you were on it and what were you doing or is it just yeah. one series that was like that and he didn't have enough chance to to look and see? 
I don't know. All I can say mm. is that, you know, you have to you have to be aware of what you're doing. And if you're if you're Hello? Oh no. No, 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 no. Can you hear me? Okay, sorry. Uh, we're having a bit of a technical difficulty. Um, I am keeping. I'm gonna keep on to uh, talking because it is recording. Um, so this is how it is, and we're gonna move on to the next photo until this gets sorted out. So the next photo is by Michael Mozart. Um, he is yeah, it's basically shooting um, the sunglasses and the reflection that is on the sunglasses. And now the problem is that hmm, like one of these like these photos, anything with reflection, uh, with, especially with uh, glasses, I always find it quite small. So if I'm just like looking at this, like I'm just flipping through the photos, if I, you know, encounter this photo, for instance, on Instagram on my phone, it's a bit too small. So I would just like say, oh, it's a reflection of something. I just pass it along. But in, in, there actually is something going on, and there's a beach volleyball going on. So you do have to like kind of find a bit of a um, solution to it. You can only photo uh, only photograph like one lens instead of two, or you do both lenses, but you make it a lot closer. You basically you get in as close as possible to get the reflection as big as possible. So when you see the photo itself you can see a lot more that's happening. Um, in that case, that's basically all you can really do about it. I think I like the idea. I think the execution always has to think like, okay, will people just drop and look at what's going on? Or will people just, you know, see what I'm actually seeing? And what, he, what Michael is seeing, there's speech five, but what I'm seeing is it's too small. And... It's always, I don't know, like I always, I always really, because of the fact that we all, a lot of people look at photos now on their phone, I always think about size as well. When things that I can see are like on my laptop is big enough, but if I shrink it down to like one fifth of the size, and it could, would I be like, would people be able to actually see the, uh, the details that I'm looking at on a big screen? So that's one of those things you kind of have to like think about uh, in the future. Can you hear me? And, yeah, I can hear you. So okay. Matt is okay. Matt. Go back. Go. Yeah. Go back to that one. I already. Do you hear? Do you hear what I just talked about? Yeah. 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 Okay. Trying to find it. No. Keep on talking about this. I'll, I'll bring it back. Um. So I I do that. You know. I I have reflection pictures like that a lot, and mostly they're me shooting with a four hundred. You know, on a roper or whatever, who's wearing the glasses and it really just ends up being the difference between how far away you are from what you're shooting. It's just like every other picture, right? It's just like, think about the background and the depth of field like you would the reflection in the sunglasses and the distance and the lens that you're using where you are versus where the, the lens is and then where what's happening is in relation to all of that. This is not, I think I like this picture better than Ryu does. I like it because in the one lens, you can see what's going on and the other lens is out of the depth of field. So you can't really. So I like that. These are hard because really what you would do is you would want to just crop it to the lenses, right? And so then you have the nose in there, but nothing else. And then it just looks weird. So these are hard to do. They're almost impossible to plan. Um, and it, it, sometimes it takes a ton of cropping and sometimes it takes software to up res it you know because you're using such a very small part of the frame this is about as well as you can do unless something really crazy is happening you know like if you were shooting her and somebody was attacking her with a knife and they were five feet away or something like that it would look you know pretty scary and really cool um but you know if you're 
this close to her, but the action is 40 feet away or something like that. It's just going to really be difficult to, to line everything up and make it look, um, you know, normal enough that you're not cutting it off on her nose diagonally, but close enough that you're not really having to search for what's going on in the lens. It's a very, very delicate balancing act with a lot of different moving parts. And so I can say that I have literally two pictures in the whole time that I've been trying to do this that accomplished the goal that, um, you know, that I was trying to. And I'll, I will, uh, I'll, I'll figure out some way to show everybody about that. Uh, this is CrossFit. I don't know. It's like, yeah, obstacle course or something like that. It looks like Mad Max. <laughs> <laughs> I like the vibe of it. I like the clean yeah. background of it. I, you know, obviously, you know, them with mod or whatever is kind of cool, but it's not, it's not, a, it's not the right moment, right? I like the, the one in the middle and the one on the right are okay. Like the one in the middle is good. Like that, that is a foundation of a picture, right? Like how she is, um, perched like that like you know it's like a I confident like it. yeah, she's yeah. Good, but the rest are just the two other ones not i'm not too yeah, crazy it, about even like the the one on the right could have been okay if the one on the left had been doing something cool but the one on the right can't be the second best so yeah. it's and also like she's not caked in mud the one on the left that really right off, you know right yeah so it's just um, it, it was a good idea and they didn't give you really what you needed here, I guess is, is really what it comes down to. Like it, you did everything right as far as setting it up and the angle is even good, even though you're lower than they are. Like all of that stuff is good and you did what you were supposed to do. I'm wondering if there was a better moment a little bit before this, like if the one who's standing got up there first and, and was taunting the other ones or if she was cheering or something, there's just not enough other things going on and the one on the left doesn't doesn't fit with the other two at all this is just bad all the way around <laughs> it's funny because like if this was in color it'd be even worse um it's uh black and white does kind of tricks to your eyes and in really like simple context like this I have to like kind of double look and kind of like make sure like yeah it's really shit. But I tried to like kind of convert it in my head into color and to just kind of like show the shittiness of the whole thing. Um, first of all, the floor. Like I wish the floor wasn't there. Like it's it was a simple background white. It could do a lot more. The moment itself is not really that good because we're we're basically like looking at a boxing moment and there's a lot of, you know, good boxing moment, even in training, there's a lot more you can do. Um, I can't really like, I don't know why, but like that simplicity of this whole thing, like, like I, I do like, but I think if you can actually like make that kind of a clean background from the CrossFit thing, I don't really understand why you can't actually do the same thing for this. Like, it really feels like you were just kind of walking have... along and saw these two people fighting. Right. And just took a picture right. of it, you know? Right, right. The, there's a white wall. You know, it it was just a matter of three inches to the left and one inch down or something. You know, yeah. that, that would have had it be a white background. So that's just sloppy. Um, you know, and again, like this, really, it's the same on this one as it is on the other one. Like he saw something, and then the moment right it's it's not like just seeing this is enough is not enough and getting your camera up is not enough like you really need their bodies need to be arranged in the frame in a way that's either symmetrical or interesting or they need to be doing something but you know the one guy just covering his face and the other guy blurred out a little bit like it's not enough blur it's too much blur and it not being um you know, flush with the background is, is not good. You have instincts, but you're not being honest enough with yourself about whether or not you've composed properly or whether or not you waited until there was something worth shooting. Uh, uh Oh, mm, I like the idea a lot. I really do. I really, really, really do. I'm just trying to figure out like how 
better came like the the thing it in the, can't be in the, it can't look the, like that it can't you yeah. cannot have something in your frame that looks like that it's just <laughs> it just looks bad i don't know scroll down and see if you can figure out what lens it was because some lenses have think no, so okay so at 4.5 right that's where you are so either this should have been wide open right if you're if the point of this is that the thing in the background is in focus and the thing in the foreground is in fo is not in focus it looks too in focus to be out of focus right it's distracting because it's not blurred enough and if you were at 4.5 and could have gone down to 2.8 you should have done that because it would have looked softer instead of something that you meant to get in focus and didn't get in focus that's what it looks like here aside from that i don't like it's not balanced you have the line going down the middle and then you have the diagonal of the road i would have tried to figure out how to make the road perpendicular i don't know if you could have stood there I, this might have been the only place that was high enough to show the background and the foreground but what i would have liked is for the road and that line and the cyclist to to have been um parallel to the bottom of the frame and then let the road in the background do whatever it was going to do mm -hmm. it looked like you it looked like you were optimizing for that road in the background which is fine as far as the focus goes but the composition should have been more concerned with what was going on in the foreground I, I kind of wanted like the guy to actually be st like standing and and climbing, and looking, so like uh, or looking know, down and, at them, you know. Yeah, or something it's like, like that. the guy really bothers me. Like it really, really, really bothers me that he's not doing anything like really cool. This could have and, been fans looking down. It could have been mechanics oh, like looking this, down. Yeah, like it's it's, it's okay. just having it be a bike rider and having it be out of focus to that degree it's not enough it's not yeah it's just not it's not no, enough. No. ah but it's so close you know it's like, close and it's a it's a good idea and you mm -hmm. did it looks like you did kind of plan it out like it doesn't look like this happened by accident but you didn't go kind of like the extra mile to to make sure that everything worked and 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 the the number one thing that doesn't work is the guy being that out of focus and the other thing is the road not you know the road in the foreground not being um parallel or perpendicular hmm. this is just from the stands it's a right? shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's a shit yeah just photo. don't do this <laughs> no it's not it's not that. worth it right you're not going to become a great photographer shooting from the stands and if if this is yeah i mean this is a point and shoot um at five six like there's I'm, I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you not to do this, right? Because if this makes you happy, then you should absolutely ignore everything that we're saying and continue to do it, right? Yeah. But this is not how to be a photographer. This is not how to get better at it. This is not. It, there, nothing comes from this. You're shooting with gear that can't do this, and you're shooting from a position where you're asking for trouble. Somebody to, you know, walk in front of you or block you. The the line. Like, look how the, the cut of the infield isn't parallel to where you are. Like, you should be shooting this from first base, right? Just outside of first base. In which case, the angle would be better, the ump wouldn't be in there, and the line would be perpendicular to the bottom. When you shoot from the stands, the angles are always going to look bad because you're too high and you're probably not going to be on axis with what you're shooting just from, you know, unless you were in exactly the right seat. You're always going to be off of where you're shooting. So it, there's nothing we can tell you to do differently other than don't do anything that you're doing right now. And that sounds bad, but I don't want you to waste your time thinking that there's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow that you're currently on. You need to get onto a different rainbow if you yeah. want to do this. No, this is really bad. Yeah, there's, there's really nothing wrong with this. Um, you know, it sucks that there are ad boards in the background. Um, but I can definitely say that, you know, given the constraints that you were in, this is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. You do want to try to figure out a way to shoot these without those in the background. Either, I don't know, you know, a lens that could get down lower, 85, 1.5, 200, F2. Obviously, these are high-end lenses and not everybody has them, but that's how you get rid of those those signs in the background. Or you're just so much lower that they're 
you know, blocked out by the rider or the horse or something like that. Mm. As far as, you know, the timing and the exposure and all of that, it's, this is good. And this D, um, was one of my students in April. Um, so this is significantly better than the work that she was doing there. Um, you know, definitely more thought into it, um, better composition, but, you know, again, when you're shooting at rodeo arenas, you're going to have signs in the background. So you need to have a plan so that at least some of your pictures, at least the ones that you're really trying to make art with, don't have that kind of stuff. If you're just making them to sell eight by tens to the riders, they're not going to care about those signs in the background. But if you're trying to get better at this and put together a portfolio that's impressive to people, then dealing with those signs is part of it. Yeah, but I also like think like she also missed a boat on the fact that it's also quite harsh light coming in that you could do a lot more with it. That I, I think that like trying to balance everything out is fine, but I think you have to also see like the kind of the imbalance, like the, the light and the shadow thing and try to work it to your advantage. Um, it, playing it safe is never really going to get you anywhere. And this so, to me is playing it very, very yeah. safe. So, so, so she, so she, she set up at a barrel, right? So this is like a process situation. She set up at a barrel because that's where the action is going to happen. Okay. That's normal, right? People, that is your first instinct mm -hmm. in these kind of situations. But when, what Ryu was saying about how the light is coming in, like, look at the light on the, on the rear of that horse. That's very, very directional light. So this was taken at 730 or 745 or something like that i'm guessing so yeah. yeah well either in the you know either probably no probably at night right as the sun's going down i don't know uh, either way it doesn't yeah. it doesn't matter it doesn't matter it makes absolutely no difference what time of day it is it matters where the sun is so you have the sun that low and again like we were talking about with the with the wrestling pictures where you could just underexpose you could have done that here you could have shot say okay what's more important me shooting the barrel and getting you know more conventional pictures or me trying to make something that's really visually interesting if you had been 15 or 20 feet to your right and we're shooting the back of the horse with the light coming on it and the dirt coming up you know up off the ground and had let everything that wasn't getting the light go dark and only had just the light that was hitting the horse and the dirt and everything then again that would have been a more interesting picture you could e even really do it from this but it's not going to be as interesting because she's going to be completely dark whereas if you had shot from behind it wouldn't matter if she was light or dark right you would have minimized the rider and you would have just been shooting the horse and the dirt coming up so you have to you have to be aware of the light first and if you're shooting in light that's good because you don't get to shoot in light that's good all the time you should be taking advantage and doing things with that light that you can't do when you're shooting at 1 or 2 p.m. <laughs> Yeah, I'm okay with this. Um, I don't know. Like, I, I, I think like now that we know that you can do this, like, I don't want to see the same thing ever again. I yeah, I, I agree. This, this one is even better than the other one, and is significantly better. Like, we're talking about a huge, huge jump from where she was in April to now. So mm -hmm. that's satisfying to me. But what I'm seeing here is somebody that's pretty comfortable. And I want you to be as uncomfortable as you were in April, but building on this as a foundation instead of building on the April pictures as a foundation. So again, what would I do in this situation? I would want her facing the other way. So, you know, coming back, right? Um, and then I would use the light. So if you, if you lowered the exposure by two stops here, it wouldn't help you because the light isn't hitting anything other than like, her, her shoulder the back of the horse's head and the the horse's butt right that's not really going to help you but if she was coming the other way and you had reduced the exposure to the point where only the the sun was on her face and her arms and the horse's face that would look really cool so i want you to think the next time you go out to shoot at this time of day whether it was 7 45 in the morning or 7 45 at night i want you to figure out how you can get that light where you want it and then use that light to your advantage this 
yeah ag- again you know it's it's, <laughs> uh, it's a again. And, and listen i understand not everybody can get access to it but you can get access somewhere yeah right it, it's nothing good is going to come of this and again if you're if this makes you happy if you like to go to the rodeo and you know you're taking pictures to kill the time or something like that that's fine but what i can tell you is given where you are the time of day and the gear you're shooting with the odds of you getting a picture that we're going to be happy with that anybody is going to be happy with other than the person who's in the picture are vanishingly small it's just it would have to be i'm guessing one in ten thousand right you could shoot ten thousand pictures from up there and still probably not get something that we would say is good you have to change those odds on along some axis if not all of them either by figuring out how to get closer and lower by shooting something where you can get closer and lower by doing that and having you know real actual camera gear to shoot with i'm not running down your gear i'm not saying everybody has to have great gear i'm saying you're asking more of it than it can do if you have a point and shoot and that's what you're shooting with figure something else out to shoot with shoot them in the parking lot when they're getting ready do behind the scenes stuff do candid things or whatever but you're asking a you know a, a point and shoot to zoom all the way out and to make up for a bad angle and to make up for bad lighting it, it's an, it's an insurmountable hill like i said you could get lucky one in ten thousand times but there's no progression it's just going to be luck and happenstance and you know maybe a tiny little bit of experience but not enough that you can bank on so yeah, i'm just telling you this isn't the path it's just not the path to get where where we need you to go we'll sit here and tell you your pictures suck as long as you want to right i don't care one way or the other what i what i don't want is for you to say oh i thought there was something i thought if i just practiced this more i would get good at it this isn't this isn't practicing what we're talking about this is this is camera phone pictures from the stands just one one step removed from that so yeah. don't take it the wrong we're not coming down on you we're just telling you this isn't the way oh we're coming down you have to like this i don't we don't want you to think this is actually a good photo or if you actually show your friends it's, oh look you got it from like that rodeo thing we went yeah. like uh, last week oh you like that's cool like that's kind of that you see i mean it's like it's for like you know friend like you say show your friends and like it's like showing baby pictures to people yeah. that kind of stuff it's just like a it's like basically you're just stating a fact that was like a memory that you actually had i, like I was like, i was here and this guy did this that's yeah, that's, that's what this is that's it it doesn't go beyond that and if you think it go, goes beyond that and that's really your fault really it's kind of help you there um we had a bit of a technical difficulty here and there but uh, this really is the end of training ground for this month i hope everything uh, you guys enjoy the whole thing and uh, we will be back next month i'll be regular from now on because i'm back and matt's back and everyone's back and we have no more summer holidays you know we just have the dreary winter months to uh, enjoy for the rest of the year so thank you very much for uh, listening um if you want more information please go to biglensfastshutter.com and that is biglensfastshutter.com if you think what we actually what we actually did for you today or what we've been doing for a long time it's helpful and if you want to give us more financial support please go to patreon.com slash blfs and that is p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash b-l-f-s thank you for listening and we will see you shortly again goodbye